Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the farm. We're going to talk about a couple of surprises that we were not expecting. Well, one we kind of expected, but one was a shock to us. So stay tuned today and let's check it out. Got a couple updates before we get to our surprises um, that are actually pretty nice. But uh, I know some of you guys like the fill update all the time. It's been two or three weeks since Phil has made an escape. So uh, that is always nice. Good morning, Gordon. Here is Phil. He's really growing on us. He is just not a care in the world. Nothing really bugs him. If he wants to get out, he does, although he hasn't. So he's been pretty good. Um, so that is a nice surprise. Um, Barb has been bred. I think I told you guys about that. That's been a little while ago. Um, another nice surprise. The sun is out today. All weekend long, we have uh, had rain. And as you can see, some on the ground here, you'll see more over in the woods. We got a little dusting of snow last night. So it's only in the 30s this morning. It's supposed to get to 40, but it does not matter because that sun is out and it feels fantastic. So it's the middle of February. Before you know it, we're going to have chickens again. We're going down on our numbers, but still right around 800 birds this year. Obviously not all at the same time, but something that we got to work on yesterday is cleaning out our brooder area. Um, it's just been very dusty like you would expect. We had 1,200 birds. We get 150 every three weeks. So I was in here yesterday cleaning out brooders, just the dander and dust everywhere. It's gonna be a ongoing project. I'm gonna be sweeping. I've got the fans blowing, kind of getting that dust out of here. So uh, brooders are cleaned out. We're gonna get some pine shavings and I'm gonna keep sweeping and I've got the uh, trusty old leaf blower in here and just blowing it out so it will be nice when these birds are ready. So just an update, first week of March, we will have our first batch of birds. Brooklyn and I will be going and picking those up and uh, brooder area will be ready. So when it was raining, that is what I was working on. And uh, a lot of you guys, uh, baby chicks, you go into tractor supply, rural king, wherever, and you see those little chicks and oh, they're so cute, but Boy, do they make a mess as they grow. Obviously, if you only get a handful of them, it's not that bad, but when you got 100 some birds, it's a lot of dander and uh, a lot of mess. So it's nice to get them out of the brooder and into their outside areas. So, but getting them this early, you gotta have them warm a little bit. It's only February, so they'll be in the brooder for three to four weeks, but it won't be too bad, so. You can kind of see the snow throughout the woods over there. It's a beautiful morning. Meat herd is looking good. Everyone just kind of finished up breakfast. You can hear the snow is melting, falling out of the trees. A little update on the breeding pens. Pretty sure thistle has been bred. To Luis, guaranteed. We could see the evidence, but we were really hoping and we were a little worried that she wasn't gonna take or not come into heat, but uh, that has happened. Hey, you missed some food up here. You want that? So, pretty sure old, uh, this is our little boar here, I keep forgetting his name. Tonka. Pretty sure Tonka has got the job done and he was younger. A lot of people ask us, what age can the boars breed? Well, when they're ready. It's a lot younger than the females. Normally females, we wait about 16 months, uh, all depending, sometimes longer before we breed them. Uh, that's just the thing with the Cooney Coonies, they don't grow as fast and you want them to be ready to breed and not, not get them bred too early. It's not healthy, it could kill them. So anyway, we're heading back. The first big surprise. Sorry, just enjoying this little dusting we had. First big surprise happened back here and it's the first time I've actually seen it. Um, we've seen marks of rooting um, we know there are wild hogs around and that is not a good thing when we've got our pigs around here But never actually seen them until just the other day 
So I came back here and of course, if you guys have followed along, you guys know what pen this is. This is our female pen, which has got mostly gilts. We do have a couple sows. If you're not familiar the difference, a sow is a pig that has had a litter of piglets. A gilt has not had a litter yet. Like Willow is a sow, she's had piglets. Her daughter right here, Willa Bean, is a gilt. She has not yet had piglets. So you can kind of tell that they're related, huh? There's Willa Bean. There's Willow. <laughs> but anyway, I pulled up on the golf cart to feed. I wasn't really making much noise. Normally I'm singing, but today I wasn't, or this day I wasn't. I pulled up right here to feed, and I could see just on the other side of the fence over there, I was like, oh man, one of the pigs are out, and that's not unusual, just because back here in the woods, sometimes a branch will fall on the fence or whatever. So just on the other side of those logs over there, if you can see those logs right there, there was two pigs, and I just assumed it was ours, and then I saw how ugly they were. They were all spiky and you could see tusks and uh, they just kind of looked at me and I looked back at them and I uh, didn't really yell or anything. My first instinct was to call for Cal and uh, he was, normally he's right behind me, but he was over on the other side. He's got a bone over there or something he was playing with. And I was like, man, I know wild pigs can be super mean and they would tear him up. So I was glad I did not do that. Um, but they just kind of looked at me like I said, they were just on the other side of this fence and then they just started walking away. Like they weren't really scared at me. I didn't yell at them or anything. And unfortunately, I did not have a gun with me except for a BB gun on the cart. Um, I have been carrying my firearm now just in case. I know they can be very, uh, very aggressive, very mean. Uh, but these two just kind of walked off. I did come back out with my gun and was not able to see them, um, but have not seen them since. That was the first time I had seen them. And I was just uh, very thankful because if they got in here, which I know if they wanna get in here, this fence is gonna be nothing. They will just go right through that fence. But uh, we've got all females in here. And if any of them were in heat, that would be a disaster. So uh, we've been keeping an eye out coming out at night, coming out a little more often than just besides feed time and checking, and we have not seen them anymore, which is a good thing. I'm not saying they won't come back, but uh, we will definitely keep our eye out. I think with Cal barking and things like that, that kind of helps sway them to go in a different direction. Good morning, Willow. But that could have been a disaster, especially if a bunch of these were in heat. What a mess that would be. Um, so we were kind of keeping an eye out and uh, man, it's raining in here because all the snow is melting and it is just kind of pouring out of the trees down in here. While we're in here, I might as well notice, I'll go to another pen, but up here in the woods, the reason we moved them in the woods, we wanted it to be drier. You can see their feed area. I told you it rained all weekend long. Where their bowls are, it's a muddy mess, but up here, it is totally fine. There's no no mud, slush, yuck. So obviously where they're eating is a heavy traffic area. We are going to move their bowls. We're gonna need more hay too, because when wet pigs go into hay, guess what, you're getting wet hay. We're gonna move their bowls up here into this area and uh, they will have a nice dry spot to get. But this is why I'm working on clearing out the woods. You can see rain all weekend, it is, it's just fine in here. As far as being a muddy mess, it's not. And they can get to areas where it is not muddy, but high traffic areas, of course, you're gonna get mud. So first big surprise, wild pigs on the farm. Didn't have any issues with it, but we are looking out for them now. And like I said, with cow barking in the evenings and things like that. <laughs> Good morning, Betty White. How are you doing? Is everyone being nice? I hope so. So anyway, oh, here's the bean. Good morning, Willa Bean. Yeah, Josie. Anyway, that is our first big surprise. First time in almost, I guess we've almost been here five years. Well, on the homestead, four years, in the camper a year. But uh, first time we actually seen 
wild pigs and hopefully the last time so nothing happened that is a good thing and we got one more big surprise i guess it wasn't a big surprise we kind of knew it was coming but we weren't you never know exactly the date but it has to do with chickens so i'm sure that's a dead giveaway let's run over here and check out the chickens <laughs> just to show you the difference before we get to the chickens here is Ryder and Smitten and you can see their pen they've been in here about a week it's a small area but with all the rain and the mud it is a mess so they'll be getting moved soon you guys have seen a ton of pig moves so you probably won't see these I won't bore you to death with constant pig moves but it's something that we do quite often and with this rain it's a little bit more often than normal. So anyway, just the difference to see between the woods and the pasture. So that is why I'm continuing to clear out that woods. So hopefully next winter, early spring, we'll be able to uh, have them out in the woods where our pasture can rest a little bit and we won't have issues with all the mud. But this is not the big surprise, but this is our flock of the brown sex links with 16 of them left. And uh, we have finally got some more eggs, more than we can eat. So that is good. I know some of our customers are gonna be happy about that. So just checking in this morning. We're trying not to get them wet. Looky there. That's early this morning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 hiding up here so 14 out of 16 so far this morning that is a great feeling and i figured out some i kind of knew some of this but uh we used to buy pallets of feed because we had so many birds and so when we went down to just this little flock we weren't going through the feed as quickly and so i i think it kind of got old and stale-ish probably and it just didn't have the nutrient value that it has when it's fresh and new so we just well it's been a while now that's probably why we're getting a lot of eggs but we got new bags of feed same kind of feed i don't think anything was wrong with it besides it was just a little old but when you're paying 600 bucks we wanted to use it all and uh so now that they've got the new feed in there and that it's not the dead of winter and our days are longer combination of both of those we are getting a lot of good eggs so that's not the biggest surprise. You guys probably already know. It's up here with our young chickens, the Australorps and Bielefelders. We've got eggs from them. Let's go check it out. All right, the big surprise was the Australorps have started laying. And I know, ooh, that's not really a surprise. That's what chickens do. But it's always exciting when uh, you have a batch of chickens, you raise them from chicks, and then you reap the uh, benefits of chickens and they start laying eggs. So it was right around 22, 22 and a half, probably about 23 weeks old that these girls have started laying. And we've, got, we've been getting two a day, so it's not a ton, but that's just how it starts. One will start laying and you'll see the difference. I did bring an egg up with me, but let's check our box this morning. Guys, I've talked about these a lot, hand gear roll away nest boxes, check them out. Use the code down in our description. You can get $15 off your hen gear nest box. We're getting clean eggs all the time and it's just so much easier to collect. So here we go. Two, oh, we got one rolled way back here. Three. So you can see they look like little, little fairy eggs. That's how it starts out when you first have chickens. You'll get small eggs. I've got one of the, I brought one of the sex links chickens we don't want those to get dripped on sex links chicken eggs with me just to compare and you can see the difference between a chicken that first started laying and uh, an older hen so you're going to start out with smaller eggs no difference except in size taste is great flavor is good and uh, they'll just keep getting bigger from here on out by the time we start our markets in may these should be full size eggs so i got a little drop on that one so anyway the australorps have started laying 
I'm gonna collect these and bring them in so they don't get any more drops on them. And I'm gonna put this back up. You can see our snow is melting. That's where we're getting all our, all our raindrops from, snow and ice. So anyway, super exciting time. That's Jamie and I talk about this all the time. We love piglets and when they're being born, that's always exciting, but we both kind of agree that our favorite time is collecting eggs. Even if you got older chickens and uh, they've been laying for a while, it's super exciting just to go out and collect their eggs every day. You're getting food every single day from an animal and uh, they're, they're not that expensive to raise. And like I said, you're getting fresh food every single day from your chickens. So how awesome is that? So we really enjoy collecting. Bielefelders have not started and I say that and I haven't checked this morning on them, so who knows, could we? Well, I know they're not in there because I've got the roosting bar up, but maybe inside, inside here, nope. But uh, they should start laying any day now. They might, obviously they're a little bit longer. Actually, you know what it is? I started with the Australorps first and then we added the Bielefelders. So they're a couple weeks younger, even though a lot of them are bigger, the Bielefelders are a bigger chicken. Um, but we do not have eggs yet from them. So that is another exciting thing that we get to look forward to. Both of our flocks are doing fantastic. Spring is just around the corner, even though we've got snow on the ground. That's how you stay positive. You just keep remembering it's just around the corner, even if it's a couple weeks or a couple months away. So anyway, we will be having a bunch of eggs again. That makes us happy. People at our markets are happy. We don't have as many chickens, but we talked about it. I think we're gonna add more, not this year, but we are gonna go back into the eggs probably. We just really enjoy the chickens and I've got a plan to keep them in the winter better. It's hard to keep these chickens in the chick shaws, especially when you got a couple hundred of them. Um, obviously they're not all in the same, but if you've seen our setup before, we had four or five chick shaws and we were running them and in the winter that gets kind of hard, but I think we've got a plan to keep them in the winter where they're not in those. So as that gets closer, we'll discuss that. But anyway, the two big surprises, new eggs from our young chickens, wild boars on the property, kind of crazy. But anyway, guys, we hope you're having a great week. We hope you enjoyed the video. As always, check us out on Instagram and Facebook and don't forget to make the change.